Hi everyone, I'm Chris, welcome to another gear review. Uh, today I want to take a look at this combat set here. This is the uh, Temperate Marpat Frog set, uh, USMC issue. Um, picked these up on eBay about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, got a fairly good price on them, so I thought they'd be worth going for. Reason being that Temperate Marpat for, for Britain, for the, the woodlands here, very, very effective camouflage. It's got a lot of uh, of this sort of medium brown, really great camo against mud and foliage and uh, you know, dead leaves, all that sort of stuff. I've always said, you know, that the woods, people think woods are just green, they're just leaves, but they're not. I mean, it, it very much depends on species of tree um, and the age of the, the particular forest or woods that you're in. Um, but a lot of the time, the actual, the leaved, branches on trees they don't start until a good few meters up and actually from head height and below uh, all you've got is the bare trunks of the trees which are obviously brown bark and then you've just got mud on the ground so it's just all brown uh, an awful lot of time especially if it's the sort of canopy in terms of the leaves where you've got not really any sunlight coming through which means you don't get low level foliage growing up which would just be pure green leaves and there is a lot of woodlands like this where you just this this brown camo works very well so as I say I thought I'd pick some up. Uh, the seller was actually um, he was a marine himself obviously this is issue stuff you can't you can't really just buy it at stores like Optactical or SKD or Grey Group or whatever so you, you do have to go on eBay for all these things but yeah like I say he was a marine rifleman the guy who picked these up from uh, very impressed with him, I have to say. Um, I can't exactly remember the name of the seller. I'm really, really impressed with the packaging. You can you can tell when you've got you know you're buying things from another military guy because it was you know it was all it was per immaculately box folded. Uh, and for those of you who aren't familiar with that, that's something I had to do a lot of them in recruit training. Is where you you basically you get your uniforms and you've got to fold the shirt in a certain way so that it's a perfect rectangular shape and then you stack them up and they've got to all be the same size and it's a pain in the arse. So the fact he didn't, I mean I would have been perfectly happy if you just rolled it up, wrapped it up, stuck it in a box, I would have been, you know, I would have done the job, doesn't matter. I would have got here just as fine, but yeah, the, um, immaculately folded and then the shirt here and the trousers individually packaged into a sort of a, a plasticized kind of like male envelope bag and then those neatly stacked and put into an exact size of cardboard box uh, to get over here. Shipping was pretty quick, um, so yeah, overall very very happy with it. Um, glad to uh, support one of these one of these USMC guys. The, the, the bloke in question was actually about to uh, deploy out to Afghan, um, and I got a, an email from him just a couple of weeks after I purchased these, saying that he was off um, and to. Uh, forward any queries onto his son, so I'm hoping he was deploying into a, an area away from the sort of uh, the rivers and the, the areas in southern Afghan where you tend to get a lot of uh, a lot of plants growing up and a lot of green areas where, which is you know obviously that, that whole issue that um, I know the British forces had an issue a while back where our desert DPM just wasn't giving us adequate camouflage which is why we moved over to NTP because we were deploying out to a, a hot environment, i.e. Afghanistan, but it wasn't desert, it wasn't all sand, it was it was um you know it was undergrowth and, and plant. So but obviously not the whole country is like that. A lot of it is just desert. So I'm I'm guessing, I'm certainly hoping he's uh, he's deployed out somewhere which is purely sand, so he's not gonna need his, his temperate pattern frog stuff here uh, and he'll be wearing the arid pattern. So he's a uh, he sold this stuff on surplus to requirements, and uh, I'm, you know, fingers crossed. He's used that money to buy himself a few P mags for his M16, or um, maybe a, 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 a new pad system for the inside of his his issued Kevlar helmet, or some better eye protection, or, or you know, whatever. Yeah. The the issue kit, even though a lot of it is very good, it doesn't matter which military you're in, unless you're unless you're some SEAL or SAS or something, chances are the stuff you get given probably isn't going to be amazing and you will be able to privately purchase stuff that's better. 
So yeah, hopefully he's, uh, he's put the money to good use. <laughs> but anyway, moving on. We start off with the trousers here. Uh, we'll go from the ankle. Uh, now I'm not sure, I haven't actually looked yet at what the securing system is on the ankles, or if it even has one. It doesn't have one. So uh, there's no ties or Velcro or anything like that in the ankles. They'll just hang as is. Very nicely stitched overall, I have to say, really, really quite well put together. I'll go. I'll tell you about the actual materials I use once we get down to the uh, to the waist area. Identical on both sides. On near on the sort of on the mid calf area here, got a small pillow pocket, two buttons for the closure. No organisational extra straps or anything on the inside, but I think these tend to be used for things like field dressings, stuff like that. Reinforced knees. I can't find an opening to put in a neoprene knee pad, sadly. I'm, I'm, I'm yet to see any military force issue the cry style combat trousers where you can insert, um, you know, some sort of plastic kneecap actually into the trouser, which I'm surprised that um, you'd think by now they would maybe cotton onto that idea, but perhaps it's a bit too too modern, a bit too extreme for a lot of, you know, the crusty old uh, military top brass that. You know, they just like things to, to look smart and they're not so concerned about combat effectiveness for some reason, not a lot of the time. But anyway, reinforced area on the knees. Would be nice to see some sort of knee pad option integrated, but at least it is reinforced. The main thigh side pocket here is actually you've got one, two, three billows on it. So it'll sit down flat when it's empty and it'll expand as you know, quite a lot um, when you uh, when you do start putting stuff in it. Got a sort of yeah, a lower edge below on the bottom here, which is also good. One button here to close. This side is sewn down, and then uh, it's actually actually elasticated on the opening there, which is good because it's a bit like a dump pouch for magazines in that you can still get things in there nice and quickly and easily but they're a lot less likely to come out because it's got that securing on the opening area. On the on your back side, two uh, just fairly standard sort of pockets, just, uh, just back there, always useful I find for a little bit of kit. And then up the front you've got your, your usual Standard trouser pockets, button fly, button closure up, front and centre there. Plenty of belt loops going all the way around. I think so you probably get a two-inch belt through of these, and, uh, and you've got elasticated sections on the waist, which is good because you know you will dehydrate and then drink, and then you'll be running around sweating and eating, etc. And you, you, your abdominal area will change over the course of a day. Uh, so that's your basic features and um, construction materials. Now I couldn't, I've got to be honest, I couldn't memorise these because it's a little bit more complex than your average bit of kit, the actual materials they've used to put these together. If I can find the label, it's in there somewhere. There's the, uh, ah, here we go, it's on one of the, the rear pockets here. There's the, uh, there's the frog label as you can see, medium regular. I, I'm more of a small reg, but you know, there's always a belt if you know, I can wear a, I can wear a medium reg. Now, construction materials. Oh, these are. This is all fire resistant. I forgot to mention before that. That's that's a feature of the frog. Flame resistant organisational gear. That's what it stands for. So uh, when you get those, um, the sort of fireballs that you will get from IEDs, it's gonna it's gonna save a lot of skin wearing this sort of stuff. Really good to see this being issued to guys. But uh, you know, we'll need it. So yeah, like I say, medium break, FR combat ensemble trouser, wooden marker, uh, Defender M, which is the, is the material that they've made. And you can see the labels. Now the actual it is made of 65% fire resistant rayon, 25% para aramid, and 10% nylon. So you know, 
fabric is not fabric is not fabric but when it comes to this sort of stuff this is uh, this is not just your average poly cotton mixture going on here this is you know it's got that fire resistance in there and that's, that's about everything for the trousers really um, nothing nothing too out of the ordinary but you've got that fire resistance solidly built really well stitched really um, I mean, the, the good thing about the, uh, the Defender M, they, I mean, they, they call it double strength on the, uh, on the label here. Uh, you know, and it's, they reckon it's just basically a lot longer lasting than your standard, your standard twill weaves. So, I'll switch the uh, trousers around here, so I can put my shirt in the middle of the view for you guys. Hopefully that's all right for you. Same material used on the sleeves and on the neck here area, even here on the on the combat shirt, underbody on the combat shirt, as British forces tend to call them, but I believe the Americans tend to just just call it combat shirt. Uh, let's uh, let's go for again. There's your, there's your frog label. Construction materials now. On the sleeve, it is exactly the same as before, 65% fire resistant rayon, 25% para aramid, and 10% nylon. Good stuff there. And then the uh, this section here, which they call dry fire, as in it wicks sweat, so it's dry and fire resistant. 80% monacrylic, 15% tensile rayon, 5% silver nylon. Now, a lot of people will probably be surprised by the silver part, I'd imagine. Um, that's a metal, right? It doesn't look very silver, but silver has brilliant properties in terms of antibacterial protection. Um, you sew just the tiniest amount of silver into a, you integrate it into a fabric or weave, and it will just, you know, it's not going to stop you sweating. You will sweat, and, you know, if you don't wash for long enough, you're going to smell. But it's all about hygiene in the field, you know, these guys are on patrols for days and days and they're jumping in streams and waddies and crawling through mud and all sorts of unpleasant shit that they, you know, that they soldier on through. Having that silver helps kill a lot of the bacteria that gets into the clothing. So that's really nice to see. Features wise, you've got, a, got about a one, a one quarter, one third zip up the front there, which is all you'll need in a, in a combat shirt. Um, it's reinforced around it with the, uh, the heavier weight material rather than being stitched directly to the dry fire stuff, which is going to definitely uh, help negate the risks of this stuff tearing when you're constantly doing the zip up and down. Pretty uh, standard other than that. Mandarin collar, obviously. Which is pretty uh, standard for uh, for a combat shirt. Sleeves are identical in the, in the way they're constructed. The actual upper arm pockets here, double button closure. Let's have a look inside. I don't believe there's any organisational features on the inside of the pockets. It's lucky I don't have to wear this stuff in combat because I would be fucked. Especially if I put any important kit in these because I'm evidently just fucking useless with them. No, just a plain pocket. It's not billowed or anything. Well, you've got, you've got a billow on the bottom, which is certainly, you know, it helps with the storing. Slightly larger gear than you might otherwise be able to if you didn't have that feature. Just a small Velcro patch here. A lot of combat shirts, they tend to go with a, a whole Velcro all over there, but they've just gone with a small one just for a, you know, a small unit patch, maybe some I'll take. I'm not exactly sure what Marine Standard procedure is on that one. Elbows, again, I've not been able to find any sort of entry into the, the elbow reinforcement area to put in pads. But it does have a, a reinforcement piece on there. Cuffs, it's a button closure. Um, which is pretty standard. Uh, we've used the same on our issue kit for many years. And that's that's about it really. Um, it's 
It's nothing too mold breaking this kit in terms of the the features and the design. It's but then you know for st it's standard issue gear. I wouldn't be expecting too much in terms of that. Uh, what it does uh, provide you with, I think, that's impressive is the quality of the material. That fire resistance, bacteria control. Uh, and the quality and toughness of the, the fabric is very good indeed. Um, I, uh, I'm very happy with it. Um, I mean, you know, you sort of, you, as an example, you know, you've got your zip ball here, YKK, and that's what you'd expect from a high quality bit of kit. So, yeah, very good stuff, very good stuff. Uh, unfortunately, it does have the, uh, the old Eagle Globe Anchors materials logo even within the material itself and uh, oh, there's one just uh, right in the back of the collar fortunately they're nice and subdued unfortunately you can't buy the proper kit without them I prefer not to have them I'm not a marine and I don't want people thinking I'm trying to pretend I am a marine but then I don't think with this accent that's going to be an issue so there we have it that is the issue temperate marpat Fire resistant organisational gear, United States Marine Corps issue. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the review, guys. Um, I'm, I'm running a, a Facebook page now, Rev Tactical, related uh, to the YouTube channel. What I'll be doing is every video I make, as soon as it gets uploaded onto YouTube, I'll be putting it on Facebook. So if you like that, um, like the actual page as it were, I'll be putting that link in the description. Then for those of you who maybe check your Facebook more than you go on YouTube, which I would imagine is quite a lot of people, then just check out that page and uh, you know, you'll, I'll be, keep that informed. I'm, I'm putting lots of other stuff on there as well, just various interesting bits and pieces. So uh, yeah, cheers for watching guys. I'll see you next time.